is three years in law school. And that's if you go straight through. Now, if you go on a part-time basis, of course, it may drag everything out. But if you go straight through, it took me seven years. In Texas, to become a judge, I had to to be an attorney for five years. And so I was an attorney for a lot longer. I did about 13 before I ran for judge, but that's the minimum. So really you only have to go to school for seven, seven additional years. And you think about it just like if you're becoming a doctor, you're going to take, go to your undergrad, but then you're going to go to medical school. Mm-hmm. Well, to become an attorney, it's undergrad, you know, your college years, and then it's law school. Um, so let me talk about my path though to getting here. And what's the youngest I have on here? Is elementary school and then up, are there any high school? Yeah. There's, there's high, high school. school. I think there's elementary. There's like two or three elementary, right, Felicia? They're um nine to 14 years old. Okay. So my road to getting here started right when where y'all are seated. Mm-hmm. It is um for me, I knew early on, um, not that I wanted to be a judge and not even necessarily that I was going to be a lawyer until I got to high school. I knew that in high school. I wrote that in my senior book, like I'm going to be like a government official or, or a attorney. But before I got there, before it was clear to me there, when I was in y'all seat, starting in middle school, student government was big to me. Who Now, who plays sports? A lot of y'all raise your hand for sports. So I was not athletic, like can't dribble a ball. Um, not an athletic person. So my extracurricular activities was student government. So in middle school, I was like class representative. And do y'all have that still, right? Okay, I'm not too old. So that was my path. So I did student government and then that continued on through high school and through college. I was like class president. You know, I was always on the executive board. But for me, that was my lane, right? Like I tell people, figure out what your interests are while you're young because, and do everything, right? I try, I try music, I try the clarinet and I didn't really ride with that, mm-hmm. but I really found that I love student government. And I'm a big advocate of student government because it really teaches you to network. You are starting with your teachers and you're learning to, to network with organizations outside of your school. Um, it teaches you to stand up and, and speak for some cause, right? Even if it's a party at your school, if it's a middle school dance, if it's a high school dance, you're learning to speak um, and, and advocate for some, some project that you want to put on. And then you're going to build on that as you get older, when you want to advocate for more serious um, issues. So um, if for, at that time in my life, it was, it was student government. And I remember in high school, we wanted a trip and the administration was like, well, y'all got to figure out how to make that happen. And, you know, you work on stuff like that and, and you learn to articulate what your needs are when you want to plan an activity, how to plan events. And so I learned all that at my time in student government. Um, and the, the most useful tools that I got from student gov- government was public speaking and also um, debate. And so that carried me all the way through. Um, That helped me get to law school. Um, That helped me when I was applying for colleges, when I needed to set myself apart. It's like, what are you doing in the classroom? That's one component. But then what are your extracurricular activities? And again, it wasn't sports for me. So um, it was student government for me. And so if you ever have a chance to be involved with student government, I encourage you to do that. So has anyone here ever done that class representative or anything? Right. And so it's it's an absolute great um, great tool. And it's something that you never lose. You will be surprised that you run into a lot of people who are just really afraid to speak in public, who are afraid to speak up for themselves. And student government helps you find your voice. Um, it teaches you that it's okay to um, fight for causes. And by the time I got to college, that's when we were, we were vote, we were able to vote and we were able to get involved with local causes. Um, and then, you know, local charities, local, local, you know, issues that were important to us. So it, it I kind of built on that as I went through school. And for me, it really all started in middle school when I started with student government. So I just encourage you to figure out if that's what you want to do. Um, certainly take that into consideration of something that um, you should do. 
So once I got out of college, then I went on to law school and that's what brought me to Texas. I went to Thurgood Marshall School of Law and I, um, at that point, knew I wanted to go into uh, the criminal justice field. I, in high school, I had some inclination that I may, but it really, excuse me, in college, but it really solidified it for me once I got to law school. And for me, it was, I wanted to be a part of a system and, and work the system and improve the system from the inside, our criminal justice system. So that, that was important um, to me. And so that's where I put my career on that path. Does that make sense? It's, and, and you're young, y'all young now. So when I keep in mind, I'm talking to the, to the babies. As y'all get older, it'll become a lot clearer what's, what your interests are. Um, but for me, it was criminal justice reform criminal, you know, all things criminal justice, that that's the kind of issues that that kind of like always piqued my interest. And so that's uh, kind of what I did. Um, and I'll pivot here to give you a little more background about me. So originally, um, I claim Oakland, I was born in San Francisco, but by middle school, I was moved to Oakland. So I claim Oakland, where so I went to middle school and high school. And my upbringing would be something that you would say, maybe I wouldn't be here as a single parent home I was raised in. My father was absent. He was out of state. Then he went to federal prison. So I never had a relationship with him because of the life choices that he made. And so if, is anyone here like not have contact with a parent raised in a single parent home or you know anybody that have those struggles? Well, Roman, you know, Roman's father is in Uh, prison. Yes, yes. And so that's, that comes with a whole different set Mm -hmm. of, of issues. And so one thing that I was lucky is I had good teachers who cared. Does anyone have te- teachers who y'all really identify with? Who y'all feel are really helpful to y'all? Yes, and mentors. Yes, so stick with those. I, I was lucky to have good teachers and good mentors coming up. And so even though my mother never went to college, I had teachers, I had counselors, I had mentors, kind of like the, the group, the setting that y'all are in now take advantage of this because they, they are providing you with these r- tools and resources. And that's what was provided to me. And that I had individuals, mentors who showed me how to fill out college applications, how to fill out financial aid. Cause I, we couldn't, we were poor, we couldn't afford to pay for college. So, you know, so it's groups like this. So this is, these are the kind of groups that are so important because everyone doesn't have access to this information at home. And so it's your mentors, it's your teachers, they help you with this information. And, and I credit, I credit those, the women in my circle who really poured into me as to helping me get to out of poverty, out of the inner city, saying I am not going to be handcuffed because of my background, you know, and they told me you put in the work, if you study, if you set your goals, and you focus on those, it's nothing that you can't do. And that's what, if you take nothing away from this and why I always share that I have struggles is because I want people to know you can always, you can always make your way out of these situations because we can't control what we're born into. We know that, right? Like we don't get to pick our parents. We don't get to pick how much money we have when we're kids. We don't, but you can pick how much you study. You can pick how much effort you put into your schoolwork because that if nothing else, can help to elevate your life and take you out of whatever circumstance you're born to if you want to change that. So that was always important to me. So that led me to um, going to college. I went to Historically Black College. You may hear a lot about HBCUs in Charlotte, North Carolina, Johnson C. Smith University. Um, It was a small college, but for me, that was a great environment for me. Some people thrive in much larger colleges. I went to a small college and that was great for me. And so that's where I really also found my voice and got really comfortable with being involved in the community and just really advocating for issues as well as for myself or for what I needed. And then I relocated to Texas and I went to law school and I met my husband here. And so we got married and opted to stay here and to have our children here. And so I have a nine-year-old and a 10-year-old. And so my husband is also an attorney. We met in law school. Um, and so from there, I went into prosecution. Does anyone know what a prosecutor does? Who knows? I think I saw a hand. Who knows what a prosecutor does? 
or district attorney, we call them district attorneys, prosecutors, same thing. Come on, Jordan. <laughs> Come on, Zania. I know you got you ladies know. Kendall, is it Kendall? Is your hand raised? Okay, unmute yourself. What does a prosecutor do? Is the prosecutor like the one who like tries to figure out who the criminal is or like or like convict him? Yes. So that was my first job out of law school. I was a prosecutor and um, we also go by assistant district attorney. So we work with law enforcement when we have someone who is accused of committing a crime and it's our job to present the evidence in court and um, present it to a jury and to a judge. And so going back again to my student government days, to my days being getting comfortable speaking in public, when you wanna work in a courthouse, you gotta be comfortable speaking in public because you're gonna be speaking to people every single day. And so um, there are people who they become lawyers ever want to speak in public. And that's okay too. You can actually, we call those transactional lawyers. You can be sitting in your office all day and you rarely have to go to court. So we have those lawyers as well. So the good thing, if you ever decide that you want to go into law, you can work in any field. I chose prosecution because again, I wanted to do work within the criminal justice system. But what the good thing about law, every business, large corporation, um, all these fields that you hear about, they all need lawyers. Sports, athletes have lawyers. Rappers have lawyers. Singers have lawyers. Hospitals have lawyers. Your school district has lawyers. So lawyers are everywhere. <laughs> Whatever your interest is, there's going to be law associated with it. Um, so you can always, if that's a degree you're interested in having, you can always use it. So there, there definitely um, is a use for it. So if that's your interest, just keep that in mind that you can do that in, in any circle. For me, again, it was um, prosecution. So that was interesting to me. And I got to try a lot of cases from thefts to murders. Um, and, you know, sometimes prosecutors get a bad rap, but the good thing is when you're working on that side, it's like having a good cop. You, you get to weed out bad cases. And so you want to have representation. You want to have people who look like us at every table. We need to be in every field. And it's the only way we're going to ensure that our voices are heard and that we're getting the change or seeing the change that we need is that we are in every room at every table. Because if we're not there, we're not a part of the decision-making. So we need to be everywhere. And so definitely keep that in mind whenever you choose your, your field, let's figure out something like what change do you uh, want to make in that area? Because that's absolutely something that um, has driven me. Then after I practiced for about 13 years, I decided to run for judge. And that's kind of, that's what, what I told you before was just a natural stepping stone for me. So before I get into a little more about what I do day to day, um, I want to stop here and ask some questions, answer some questions that you may have about the practice of law, um, even some of prosecution, other fields or law school, college. What are some questions y'all have right now? I have a question. I, I, I and, and ladies, I'm going to let you guys talk too, but I have a question. You know, I'm into medical, but uh -huh. I was thinking about changing my field. I'm thinking about because I'm into this. Um, I have a sometimes I, I really want, would like to get into family law because I have dealt with some of that mm -hmm. um, in the past. And I wanted to know do you think that becoming a paralegal first? seeing what the environment is about and then approaching on? Or do you think that maybe you would take the, a bigger step than a paralegal? And I'm not saying that paralegals aren't big steps. I'm just saying, or do you think, how do you think someone who would be transitioning over to a new position, how would they take on that role without feeling overwhelmed? So if you want to become a lawyer, I don't, I think that you do that because there's a lot of energy and in, in in finances required to become a, even a paralegal. So if you're going to put the energy in to become a paralegal, if ultimately you want to get to becoming an attorney, my advice would always be just go ahead and just go to just law go for, okay. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's just, you're going to put in um, a lot of time to get to being a paralegal. And if you're, if you, you don't need that to become 
an attorney. And okay. so you could, if you want to just see if a firm you can get in with a firm on another way, an entry level, just to see the environment. But I don't think becoming a paralegal first is absolutely required. I think you think you can get the experience another way so that you don't okay. pour that money into going to school and putting in um, the time. And then now you have to go, you still got to go to law school. Okay. So, okay. you know, I would just okay. jump right to going through the, the process. Um, and of course, if you want to be a paralegal, great. I mean, they, they make good money, particularly if they get in a good firm, a big mm -hmm. firm, but also- If you, you already want to climb to the top, start- Yeah, the you want to get to where you want to be. So <laughs> yeah, okay. The resources there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Questions, girls? Yes, ma'am. Kendall? Mm -hmm. Um, do you know the number of cases you've done? Hmm. The number of cases I've, it's, it's been thousands. I can't even, um, so when I was, when I first came out of law school, I worked in the Dallas Fort Worth area, and then I moved to the Houston area. And if you know, if you heard any much about Houston, it's the fourth largest city in the nation and it is a monster of a caseload. And so I have handled thousands of cases, um, it's just a, it's kind of insane, <laughs> but you know, if you, when you think about it, it's just like, if you, you know, how a doctor, how he has like, he or she will have a bunch of patients that they're going to see in a day. That's it. I get a bunch of files, like every day there, there are files. I mean, there are arrests happening constantly. And so I'm, we're constantly having cases, um, that you're dealing with and that you're putting your hands on. And some are going to be plea bargains where they're done quicker. Some are going to be trials where they last out longer. Um, so I've kind of done both sides. And we, when I was on the de defense side, it was a different side. I did some years with criminal defense before I took the bench. Um, but you're handling cases all over the place. Mm -hmm. So it's lots. <laughs> Next question. Yes. Shakira, you can call them out because I've got oh, Okay, Shay. Um, I'm wondering how was your experience being a black woman in this field? Mm. Well, so <laughs> again, um, you know, it's a mixed bag. And and just to be honest, we are we're not, it's still a very white male dominated field. And that, that has not changed. I'm in a metropolitan city. And so I'm, I see, and we have a law school here. That's a historically black law school. And that's where I went. We have more black lawyers here than what y'all, I'm sure what y'all see out there. Like y'all, I've looked up California oh, yes. law percentage rate. It is like mine. Oh yes, we do. Low. Cause I've been, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. So y'all don't have as much. So, mm -mm. so in the field, it it, it has um, they, it has its challenges. I have dealt with racist judges. I have dealt with racist opposing counsel. I have had to work a lot harder to um, prove myself. And you know, being honest, it's like that in most fields. You know, mm -hmm. we are questioned, and sometimes we don't get the credit. Um, but a win's a win. And so when I'm going to court constantly, and when I was as working as a prosecutor, I'm winning my cases. I'm getting good, just verdicts for my victims that I'm representing. When I'm on defense, if I'm getting good outcomes for my clients, you're going to get there. You're going to get your respect. Obviously, I worked my way up to become a judge. You get there. But you know, unfortunately, our road sometimes is always a little more, more difficult. And so law has a we still have a ways to go. Um, when you look at some of the larger law firms today, you can look at their um, attorney list and have sometimes not a single black face at their firm or have one or two mixed in. And so, you know, that's something that why we need more folks that look like y'all, you know, look like me, y'all need to come and join the ranks. Um, yes. Because sometimes I think you'll look on TV and you think, oh, there, there are a lot of Blacks in this field. Then you pull those numbers and you're like, oh, wait, it's less than 10%. So no, it's no, it's not. So in a grand scheme, it is still a very white dominated field, but we are making strides. And as you see, we my on our road to having our first black woman to the U.S. Supreme Court, but you know it's 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 a long road. Um, not always easy, but we also have a great support system. I was, I am big on mentors, and when I came into the field, older black females um, helped me, and so I connected with women who were in the field 
before me through somewhere through my sorority and that helped me to get in and they looked out for me and so that's why I'm always looking out for younger attorneys because I know how important and how impactful that was for me and so I'm always always sharing with younger attorneys coming up whatever y'all need come to my courtroom come and see me because someone did that for me when I came into practice whatever you need to me could come and see me let me help you because if we don't help each other it, it, we're not going to make it. And yeah. so we, we have to continue to lean on each other. And I was lucky to have people that I could lean on to, so, you know, not make it so bad, but it's tough, um, but we make it. Yeah. Good question. Okay. Adele, did you have a question? I see you, sweet angel. Um, when you were running for a judge, were you um, ever nervous? Yes. Yeah, so in all my years of, um, practicing, I, st I still get nervous. I get nervous sometimes when I'm talking in court, you know, when I'm about to sometimes sentence someone on a serious case, like it, it's, it, you do, you, you do get a little nervous. Um, and when you're running for judge, it's, it's like running for any office. It's just like, just like the president had to go out here and campaign. I had to go and speak to groups. I had to go speak to women's groups. I had to go speak to churches. I had to go introduce myself. I had to ask people to vote for me. Um, I had to, you know, tell people why they should vote for me and so everyone's not always nice um everybody doesn't want to want to hear your spill um but you know you just do it and you know why you're doing it and so mm -hmm. you you get more comfortable out when you're out there speaking um I still don't love campaigning but it's a part of the job because judges are elected in my state um so you know but the more you do it you just get comfortable but yeah you you get nervous and you know I think nerves are good. If you, if you, you know, if you stop being nervous, maybe you're too comfortable, you know? And so I think nerves are good. And nerves kind of remind you that this, this is big, like this is important, you know? So it's okay. Um, you just have to always say center yourself and just go for it. And that's all you can do, but you're, you're going to have nerves and that's just normal. Good question. Any other question? I saw Jordan. That. Um, are you a generalist or a specialist? I'm sorry? Are you a generalist or a specialist? A generalist or a specialist. Are you talking about in terms of the kind of cases I hear? Mm -hmm. So um, my court would be general. Um, we hear, I hear everything that's considered a felony criminal case. Like, so we don't have, I don't have, I'm not a specialty court. Um, I do have a specialty docket where I deal with, um, we call it our drug court. So individuals with substance abuse problems, but addiction problems. I have a special docket just for those individuals. So they're charged with a crime, but they also have a drug addiction. And the purpose of that docket is to help those people get rehabilitative services. So we can get them in rehab and try to get them out of the criminal justice system. So that's my specialty court. The rest of my courts is a general jurisdiction court. And so it's, it could be a robbery, a theft, a burglary, you know, a murder. It could be any, mm -hmm. any of those, but I do have my specialty docket. Yes, Shay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, if you're comfortable answering, yeah. how is your mental state um, dealing with all these cases? So that, let me tell you something. So that, are you, in, how, how old are you? I'm 17. Okay, so uh, you can understand this. Um, it is um, important that when you work in a field like this, that you find a way to um, decompress in a healthy way. And because there are a lot of unhealthy ways that some people choose to decompress. Mm -hmm. I um, work out. I went to the gym before we started this. Um, and I have to, um, I actually started back speaking with one of my, with my um, therapist, actually when COVID started. And it's um, hard not to see, you know, bad things constantly and not sometimes make yourself internalize it. You're going to be sad sometimes. And this was not just as a judge, even as a prosecutor, because when you start prosecuting felony cases, you're seeing sometimes the worst that people can do. And you see the strength in people too, because you see victims that have survived a lot and you see their strength, um, but you do see bad things. And you have to remind yourself that this is a small percentage. It's not the world. 
um, but we're human and you're going to take some of that home. And so when I have a victim in my court who has been harmed seriously, it's hard to take that off completely when you get home. Mm -hmm. So you just find ways. And for me, I, I work out regularly and I have a therapist on speed dial who I talk mm -hmm. to. And I also have a network. I have a group text, a girlfriend, some other um, lawyer moms. We are all went to law school together and we are on our group text and we text daily. And so I am, a, you got to have that sister network. And yes. so we literally daily are texting and we can understand because we're all lawyers, we're moms, we're black women, and we know the struggles. And so find your support system. And, and that started young for me too. You know, you have your crew in middle school, you're going to have your crew in high school, your crew, mm -hmm. you're going to have your mom and crew when you get grown. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just, it doesn't stop, you know, you got to find your support system. So that's a good question, but that is how um, I have been able to make sure that I'm staying healthy through all of this. Mm -hmm. Next question. Thanks, Self Selfie had a question. Who? Selfie. Oh. Did you have a question? Selfie. Sufi. You're still <laughs> muted. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, I was gonna ask. Uh, Go ahead. Do you like being a lawyer or a judge? Um, like, which one do you like better? So they're, uh, they're different. I, where I am now, I like practicing, um, excuse me, I enjoy practicing law when I was in the courtroom. Um, I am enjoying being a judge. Um, you know, this is something that it's still new. I'm in my, again, this is just my second going into my second year. Um, but I do like this part because I do like, sometimes you're, you're a gatekeeper. And I've had to um, check officers when evidence was illegally seized. I'm suppressed evidence. And so you're able to be a gatekeeper and you're making a change from this side. And so I've, I've been able to, we, there is a lot of discussion um, about changing bonds about, you know, individuals being held in jail for very high bond amounts. Well, I control bonds. So what bonds are set? So there are decisions that you can make as a judge that you cannot make when you're practicing. So for where I am now, I am enjoying being a judge because it's allowed me to kind of do some of the things that I've, I've wanted to do. Um, but also recognize it's an elected position. So if I'm not reelected, then I would just go back to practicing law. <laughs> It's a good thing about once I once you earn that law degree, it's yours. <laughs> so you always have it. <laughs> okay, I have a question. Once you have your law degree, you know how in medical, um, after every so years, you'll need to go back and kind of get recertified for different things that come out. Do you need to do that for law? Okay. Yeah. So once you get out of law school, you're not, you're not able to practice until you pass the bar exam. I should make that very clear. Like when you in high school, how you need that SAT or ACT to go to college. Yes. You are, you cannot practice until you are licensed. And that means that you have to pass the bar exam for the state in which you are practicing. Also mm -hmm. being licensed in one state does not allow you to practice in another. So I'm licensed in oh, Texas only. Okay. I can't come to California and pick up cases. I, I can't okay. be the lead counsel. I would have to get local counsel there to essentially be the lead person. And then I work on the case. So yes, you have to pass the bar exam. And then we have what we call continuous legal education. And, but it's just courses. We just have a certain amount of hours that we have to do every year um, to just keep up, you know, keep your stuff um, current. Because if you don't, then right, you can't practice. So we have a certain amount of hours that we have to do a continuous legal education. Yep. Keep that up to date. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any other questions? Any more questions, ladies? Okay, I see Diani. Uh, I have a I have a question about the jury. Like, how does it work, and like, who picks the people in the jury? That's a good question. I didn't know if y'all cared enough about jurors. Okay, so here's what happens. I just <laughs> had to pick a jury last week. We um, summon a room full of people. So for us, we normally do about 150 per court. And then what happens is we get them all in the room, we go through qualifications, then the lawyers question the jurors, they each get 10 strikes here in Texas for a felony case so they can look at the panel and say I don't like 10 of these people, 
and get rid of them. The other side, they get their 10. I don't like those, these particular people, whatever reason, it just, it can be a race reason. They can't say, I don't like them because they're black. I, I don't like them because they're a woman. That's illegal. But they can say, I didn't like their answer or they didn't seem like they were friendly. So they can strike those 10 people. Then if there are any answers that the jurors gave that disqualified them, they are gone. And then it's the first 12 people who are left and that's your jury. So it's, it's, you don't pick them. Like you don't say, I want you, I want you, I want you. We go through strikes. And then once we stricken all these people, it's the first 12 who are left, they actually sit on the jury. And then when it's a jury trial, they decide the facts. So if, for instance, one person said the light was red, another person said it was green, the jury will hear the evidence. And they're going to say, what they thought the light was. If someone is charged with theft, they're gonna hear the evidence and say, yes, I think they stole the item. No, I don't think they did. And so on and so forth. So when it's a jury, the jurors actually making the decision. When it's a jury trial as a judge, all I'm doing is making sure that the rules are being followed. I am, I have certain paperwork that I have to fill out. And then I make sure that both sides are following the rules of the court, following the rules of the state. And that's my goal, that no one's rights are being violated. And then once a juror returned a verdict, I certify their verdict, make sure that they comply with all of the laws. And then that's the final decision. I cannot overrule the decision of the jury. I can't. An appellate court can, but as a state judge, if my juror that we've just seated says someone is guilty, I cannot as a judge come back and say, no, they're not. That's like, that's not how that works. People think the, ju the judge has like the ultimate power in every, and they really don't. So if it's a jury trial, that means jurors decide if the person is guilty. The judge cannot come in and say anything. In fact, I would be violating a rule if I even commented, like I couldn't even say, well, I disagree with y'all's decision. Like I would get, I could get in trouble for that. Like okay. it is completely up to the jury when it's a jury trial. Now, if it's to the court, to the judge, then of course the judge will make the decision. And California does a lot to the judge. Like I looked at y'all's numbers. California does a whole lot to the judge. Y'all slow jurors too, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hate on that. Don't I know. It's <laughs> just too big and so many people. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, oh, I know what I was gonna say too. And, and if this is too personal, don't answer either because I think we're being recorded live. Um, what's the longest you no, what is the longest someone has gotten themselves in trouble? Because I don't think you sentence people. I think people sentence themselves. I'm that girl. Tell me if I'm wrong. No, I mean, and that's I mean, that's a good way to put it because I think you know, people want to put the onus on, you know, necessarily maybe the judge and it's like, okay, the judge may give the number, but if someone was out here and they committed a murder, well, you know, you bought that sentence, which, yeah, I don't even know your behavior. You yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So, um, the longest that I, as a prosecutor, the longest sentence was, I think maybe 60 years, 60, Sheesh. maybe okay. 60. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I can't recall doing a life. So I think it's a 60 year. And as a judge so far, the, the longest that I have sentenced someone to um, has been 40 years. Mm, okay. But I am um, just, and, 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 and this is now, this is what is, um, what's surprising to me taking the bench is how impactful that is to you personally. Even if someone, you know that, you know, if someone's been found guilty or they pled guilty, I had defendants come before me and they they plead guilty and they're like, but I want you to assess my punishment. Rendering mm -hmm. that sentence and, and, and signing that judgment is nothing to take lightly. And, and I was really surprised at how impactful it really is because it's your signature. They, they may have bought that sentence with their behavior, um, but it's still your signature on it. Yeah. And it is, you know, it's still tough because you, the thought of sending someone away for decades, it's, it's tough, mm -hmm. but also it's usually because there is a victim on the other side of that, that suffered greatly as well. Yeah. So you have to do that balancing. And so it's, it's not, if you, if you care, if you're compa have compassion for people, those kind of decisions don't come lightly. You hear about some very cold judges and maybe they don't care, but you know, unfortunately, um, you do have judges like that, but that's not me. I, I don't mm -hmm. take that lightly at all. Yeah. Yeah. 
Any more questions? Okay, Shay, I see you. Um, have you noticed any abuse of power? Mm. Yes. Yeah, unfortunately, um, we do have we we do have that. I mean, we are one. I'm a very I live in a very red conservative state, and um, I have I have said this publicly. I I know for a fact that there are judges who still hold racist views. That there are cities and counties where you don't want to be caught or arrested in if you look like me and, and, and your treatment will reflect that. And that's unfortunate. So um, as a prosecutor, I have um, even seen, I've had officers who I was like, yeah, no, I'm not presenting this case. Like what, how did you, how did you get into his trunk again? You know, you, you're able to ask okay. those questions. And so unfortunately, yeah, there, there it's everywhere. It doesn't matter what, you know, it, with medical field, legal field, and banking, there, there's, there's racism that we have to deal. We still have to deal with everywhere, and so mm-hmm. I would not ever say that it doesn't exist and that it's all gone. Um, it's, it's certainly there, um, but the more we are at, at the table, the more we are taking up space in these areas, mm-hmm. we're able to help counteract that. Um, but we have far to go in this country. You know, we're not mm-hmm. there yet, but we're getting there. <laughs> Any more questions, ladies? Who hasn't said anything? I know you, I know we aren't shy because we're family, so I know we're not shy. Are those sisters down there, Kiki and Mackenzie? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> they're just laughing and having a good time, huh? But I still appreciate how they're still listening, though, even though mm-hmm. they're laughing. Ladies, do you want to say anything? Tell me about some of the, some careers y'all are thinking about. Yes, that, that was going to be my next. Okay. <laughs> Who wants to Let's share go that? down the line so everybody can talk. Yeah, too. that's good. Mm-hmm. So let's start with Kiki and Mackenzie. Unmute yourselves, beautiful girls. Uh, wait, what was the question again? What, what career are you thinking about or what interests do you have? What do you want to do? Be a teacher. Okay. Thank you. We need you. <laughs> yes. And I would like to be a lawyer. Oh, cool. oh girl. Go girl. Come on oh, over. Yeah. You. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think you I think you can get there already. I can tell you have the spirit. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what about you, Jordan? Um, I want to be either a dance teacher or a professional artist. Yeah, I can see that with you. Oh, that's awesome. I, you know, I um can't dance. So Me either. <laughs> two, like, step, two step, two step, two step. <laughs> but other than that, that's it. <laughs> Done. Don't ask me to do much coordinate. I, I can't trip over my feet. I am, I am. Unable to do that. I'm going to actually put my daughter in dance this summer and help her out because I don't want her to have oh, my left feet. Okay. Felicia, do you know how to dance? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what about you, Yamaya? What would you like to be? Um, right now, I think I want to like do design, clothing, and interior decorating stuff. Go, girl! Oh, that is really good. Let that say, is we, really we good. We wanted to um redecorate downstairs, and so we had to hire someone to do that. So that's a field that mm-hmm. absolutely that is needed and a computer can't take that away so good deal. yeah right <laughs> good deal <laughs> Adele I would like to be a um, maybe a filmmaker because um, I like making films and um, I can do graphic design so maybe a graphic designer oh and that is really good. And so do you know, um, well, I will tell you, as you like get, oh, what grade are you in right now? I'm in fifth. Okay. So when you get a little older, with just making flyers for people, designing, that is like a way to make money mm. on the side. So when I was campaigning, I had my niece um, who was in college at the time. Um, or she's still a college age, but I had her, she knows graphic design doing like all my flyers and I would just pay her because when you're running, you constantly need um, social media content. You constantly mm-hmm. need 
cards, you know, stuff designed with your messaging to be sent out. And so you keep working on that. You could do that as a side job while you're in school to earn money on the side because people, it's just, it's, it's, it's needed. And with this, everything being on social media, people need content constantly. So you can turn that into something. So stick mm-hmm. with it. <laughs> and Kendall? Uh, it's the same thing as Jordan. I want to be a professional artist. Okay. Uh, okay. Exactly. And, the, and, and I know that is something that we, you know, obviously need to be in that space as well. So if you're creative like that, that's just amazing. Mm-hmm. So kudos to you. Mm-hmm. And Denia? Um, that pretty know. smile, girl. Um, <laughs> Um, I'd rather thought about being like a lawyer or a dancer because I don't know those things really entertain me so. yeah <laughs> seem like you can do the law and then you can dance it out girl <laughs> dance it out <laughs> <laughs> yeah it again and I I love when I'm able to go just see like beautiful performances it's just I am just so in awe of, of the talent you know that it takes to put on some of these shows like yeah and the amazing. choreography and all that stuff yes. and keeping up and being in the rhythm and the same thing it's like oh how do you do that right it, it's just I am just in awe of all these people on stage and it's just just so beautiful and I'm like how do y'all pull this off and I go backstage and it's just so, so many props and I'm like how do y'all even move around all this yes. like, it's crazy <laughs> but it's it's beautiful and so yeah I always love to see that Zanaya. Um, I'll say I'll be an entrepreneur. I know that's right. Go okay, but what, what what business though? Probably like and like um design things. Okay. Good okay. Deal. Yeah. Like you want to yeah. make things. Zanaya, you yeah. want to like make things? Yeah, kind of like my mom. She's a um like a graphic designer and stuff. Oh, awesome. and stuff like that. Good deal. Yeah. Yeah. Go, girl. And Diani. Um, I either want to be an actress or like a coach, like a basketball coach, or just any sport. Oh, well, good. Okay. Do you already play sports now? Yeah, I, I kind of do. I play basketball. What grade are you in? Six. Oh, okay. Well, good deal. Like that. Mm-hmm. You know, and listen, you stick with your sports, you get your college paid for. I hope my kids get a scholarship. Oh, I know. <laughs> Please. Yeah. That's all. Awesome. Right. <laughs> what about you, Shay? Okay. I have a lot. Okay. So, uh, cosmetics industry, mm-hmm. uh, cosmetology, Definitely. a professor a travel photographer, and then um, something revolving around painting. I'm not sure what yet. Okay. Well, good. The possibilities deal. are endless. And I love how you have them in that order. Yeah. Go girl. Yeah. And, and again, that it. is such a big, when you start talking, it, that's a field that obviously computer can't take that away. And the beauty field, comp, that is just, I mean, that's just booming and it makes so much money. And when it comes to us, you know, Black women, we go to women who look like us yes. <laughs> because we know our yep. skin, we know our hair. And so yeah. that is awesome that you want to go into that because you're going to, you're, you're supported. Um, mm-hmm. So the community needs you. So I commend you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do we go through all the girls? Sufi, I don't think. Oh, Did Sufi. Sufi, are you there, girl? <laughs> all right um i want to be a lot of things or i still want to okay yeah. so before this meeting i wanted to be a lawyer but now i want to do it more way more okay. <laughs> and, um an athlete and i want to do cosmetology for nails because i'm really good at nails okay and um uh, yeah so a lawyer an athlete and a cosmetologist what That's grade good. are you in? Eighth. 
okay, well, if you're on your way to high school, so make sure you get involved with some student government, unless you're, unless you're full time with the sports and you don't have time. But if you have time, I mean, maybe you can add that on, but that would be great. If you want to take that path, that would be awesome. Cause, um, it is something that, um, you know, can only help you. And I love that you, that you sing it out doing nails. So one of my sorority sisters just started a nail salon last month, which was big because we don't have a, a lot of black owned nail salons. Okay. And it is, um, at least out here, we don't in the Houston area, we don't have a whole lot. It's just like a few. And okay. so for some reason that space has been taken over. Um, so it's just to have us kind of get back and in, back into that. And so we pour yeah. enough of our money into the nail industry. We should have, yeah. you know, some more of us in that space. And so I was very proud of her to start her own nail salon, but so keep that up. And of course the law, we always need more of us. So yeah. come on over here too. <laughs> uh -huh, right. And come over to the medical field. I didn't hear anybody say anything about the medical field. Ain't that bad. I'm stressing people out with COVID right now. People scared of <laughs> medical field. That's why we need you guys more and more and more to educate, educate, <laughs> educate, help. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, did we go through everyone in there? their path, their career road. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. um, before we go, so I know we're approaching on our hour. I just, I just really wanted to make sure that y'all, um, were left with anything is possible, whatever your career path is, mm -hmm. you don't even have to be married to that right now. You know, you're saying, this is what I want to do. It's probably going to change two or three more times, or you may come back to your original, um, when you start getting a little older, um, if you can find a way to volunteer, to intern, um, sometimes you get paid internships later, but if you can find a way to um, work with someone who does that kind of work, so you can really see what's required, really see what the day-to-day -day is like. And you that'll really help you figure out if that's something that you want to do. When I, I thought I would take the path of going a teacher first and then law school, and then I interned at a um, high school when I was in college. And I was like, yeah, no, that's not for me. Yeah, so no. I just went ahead and went to law yeah. <laughs> to law school. <laughs> so you got to figure out <laughs> your strength. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I just think when you, when you work and so don't feel bad if you change your uh, career choice or your major three or four times, because this is the time where you get to explore it all. So take those different classes, um, take, you know, up different hobbies and just find your love and just figure out what absolutely makes you happy. And if you can turn that into a career, it's, it's ab an absolute blessing because you want to go into a field that you love. Um, I always stress focus on your academics because it's um, easier to keep getting ahead of your studies and to fall behind and try to catch up. So if you would just stay on top of your schoolwork, you don't want to get into a hole. But even if you do, you can get out of it. Um, I never say that I was this straight A 4.0 student because I wasn't. I was an A B student, um, <laughs> so I got some A's and I got some B's too. Um, but you know, one thing that I've always knew that um, I'm just going to put into work, right? And wherever I fall, if I land on a B, as long as I know that I studied and put that effort into it, if it turns out to be a B, my mother was always like, "If that's what it is, I'm going to be proud of you," because you put in the effort. So, put in the effort, whatever you do, put in the effort. And is that my granddad in the background? Hey, granddaddy. <laughs> yes. Sorry, you guys. Yes. I know. <laughs> yes. say, say hi to Mika. Sorry, everyone. Hi. This hey, is my father, everybody. This is Dana's dad. We, he just wants to say hi to his granddaughter. Okay. And this, okay. Uh, these are the girls in the book club, and you know Felicia already. Okay. Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye, Dad. Or Mika. She's right here. <laughs> hey, granddaddy. That's Tamika right there. See me. I'm sorry, you guys. Okay, all right, hi, she. Okay. Dad. <laughs> Thank you for your migraine. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye, Dad.
That's so funny. Um, so anyway, that's my spiel about that. Y'all aren't old enough, so I won't give y'all the boy talk right now, but I'll just say stay focused. <laughs> we'll save that time for another time. We'll get you back. <laughs> that's another, that's another topic. And Shay, you're in high school, so you can get my email, get my information from um Shakiri. If you have any questions on your road to figure out what you're doing after high school, then yes. certainly you can send me a message. Um I would love that. Yeah, it's it's yeah, because I had to navigate those waters with um it took mentors to help me. So you can always shoot me a message or give me a call and I will um answer any questions that I can have. I don't know about art, but you know, if you <laughs> <laughs> or dancing, but or dancing, I don't know, but you can call me and we can discuss whatever. So I know you're on your way to making choice. Have you made any choices about college? No, not yet. I do know that I would like to travel a lot. Okay. And I have talked to my mother about like traveling and also studying at the same time. Okay. So I'm exploring that. Okay. And I, I studied abroad. I mean, I went to my four year, but I did study abroad a semester. I did mm -hmm. Morocco. And so it was, I loved it, but I didn't, I don't know if you mean study the whole time. I didn't do that, but I did, um, I did do a semester abroad and it was like the best experience. So I am all for studying abroad, living in another country really. Um, it's just, it just, I think it just takes your education to another level to really live in another culture and really see how other countries, um, do education. So, um, certainly get my information and holler at me if you have any questions, before we part, I know it's 9.30 or 9.30 my time. So it's at 7.30 y'all time. Yeah. Are there any additional questions? Oh, is this a rapid on here? Yamaya? Sorry. I phone. <laughs> oh, I thought Mackenzie was putting up a phone. Keep. I was like, I couldn't read that. Um, oh, wait, well, it has been a joy talking to y'all. I'm um, talking yes. with y'all. I love y'all's ability to like speak back and know kind of what you want to do um, mm -hmm. already and just already have goals set and just know that you can make it things, even when things get tough. I, I yeah, y'all aren't old enough to hear about some of the bumps in the road I had, but I'll just tell you, <laughs> you're going to run into some bumps, yeah. but the point is just stay encouraged and mm -hmm. keep moving forward and you know what your goals are and don't let anybody take you off that path to your yes. goals and you're going to be fine. So yeah. Thanks. And later. stay prayed up too. Oh, um, yes. And then Mika, we um, we'll I'll talk to you later, but Mika, we'll have your husband. Uh,